you recently surprised people when you said that you are a gun owner. And then if someone came into your that house... That's not the first time I've, I've, they I've would talked get shot. about it. That's not the first time I've talked about so it. So what kind of gun do you own, and when and why did you get it? I have a Glock, and um, I've had it for quite some time. In the ReliefFactor.com studios, here's Mike. Yeah, that's a doozy. How about this one? Did you hear the, the news about the Glock that she claims that she owns, that she's had for some time? That's what she told 60 Minutes the other night, right? As Charles C.W. Cook reports over at National Review, she didn't say what type of Glock, and Bill Whitaker didn't ask her to elaborate, but from her previous statements, we know that it's a Glock handgun, and from her previous actions, we therefore know it's exactly the sort of firearm that at two points in her career... She's tried to prevent her fellow citizens from owning. How about that doozy? How about how about that uh, Lulu? How about this one? When she was district attorney in San Francisco, and you can only imagine what kind of district attorney she was in San Francisco. What a shock that San Francisco is in the condition it's in today. She backed Proposition H. If Proposition H had not been struck down by the courts, it would have banned, banned all handguns in her city. Two years later, she signed on to an amicus brief in the case of D.C. versus Heller that claimed that the Second Amendment contained no protections of the individual right to keep and bear arms and argued that Washington, D.C. could therefore ban all handguns if it so wished. So, in the last two decades, Kamala has lived in two places, San Francisco and Washington, D.C. And as her public record proves, she has tra tried to ban the private ownership of handguns in both locations. But now, she's bragging that she's a Glock owner. She owns a Glock like I own a bazooka, all right? She she no more has a Glock than the man in the moon. I I I I, don't, I, I run out of so so let me uh, let me share with you the shock of the mainstream media being either duped into believing her lies that she's suddenly a moderate on a moderate on everything, or they're just going along with the lies so they can get her elected. It's probably the latter. They're not doing their job, and we all know that. We all know that. We know by now that the media desperately wants her to win. Go look at the Drudge Report. Go look at the, the all the online sites that are not, that don't allow conservative voices. Look at MSNBC and CNN and ABC and CBS and Mediaite. Look at the, they're all one-sided. There's not even a pretense of objectivity. And there certainly is no reporting reflecting the will of more than half of the United States of America. We know that more than half of this country wants Trump to win. Now, you think it might be less than half? I'm talking about the, the United States of America. Because we got we basically got blue cities and red and a red country. <laughs> now, we don't have we don't really have blue states. We've got blue cities. We've got Democrat-run cities. We've got enclaves here in New York, L.A., Chicago. Go down the list. Big cities: Minneapolis, Tampa. You got blue cities surrounded by a sea of Republicans or right-of-center people. So more than half the country we know. You ever look at a map? Look at a map of 2020. It's the whole country, even with, with Biden winning, it's a sea of red. But those pockets of blue cities, the densely populated Democrat-run cities, decide the outcome of the national election. Now, at this point, it's looking very good that this country is going to decide that Donald Trump needs to be reelected. But I want to read to you, this is from Jim Vanderhei and Mike Allen. I've never interviewed these guys. 
I've read their work for years. They're respected Washington, D.C. type journalists, okay? Headline, behind the curtain, America agrees on a shocking number of ideas. The article says, at our most polarized time in living memory, the two parties have never been more unified on ideas. I'm not kidding you. I'm reading this this morning thinking, where do I smell burning toast? Am I having a stroke? Am I final? Is this the big one? Am I having an, am I in the midst of an aneurysm? At our most polarized time in living memory, the two parties have never been more unified. Now, they say Harris and Trump have vastly different worldviews, but actually disagree a hell of a lot more about style than substance. If you take them at their word. Well, that's the whole key, Jim Vander High and Mike Allen. You're taking Kamala at her word that suddenly she is a centrist, moderate, blue dog Democrat. She doesn't want to take your guns. She wants a border wall. She wants world. Yeah, if you take her at her word. They write a whole column about the ways they agree. Are you ready for this? Stronger borders and tougher immigration laws. Harris and the Biden administration have embraced restrictions on asylum that resemble Trump policies that they once opposed. Oh, yeah, they've embraced them. Now suddenly they want to be border hawks, huh? They want to be tough on the border, huh? A tougher stance against China. Increasing domestic energy production. You know, because Kamala's lying to you and suddenly is in favor of fracking. Right, Pennsylvania? Wink, wink. Providing incentives for U.S. manufacturing, supporting Israel and its wars, providing more child care assist, on and on and on. This whole article is based on the premise that Kamala Harris isn't a bald-faced liar about all of her all of her flip-flops. If they did their job, they would crucify her for flip-flopping on everything. But they're not doing their job. They want her to win. They want her to win. They're, she's even lying about being a change agent, which is perhaps the most dastardly lie of all. And I guess, I suppose, I presume, I assume that they're accepting her lie that she would be different than Joe Biden. That's the whole campaign, right? I'm not Joe Biden, she likes to say when she cackles. She cackles, I'm not Donald Trump. She cackles, I'm different. I'm different. Well, that's when she's on the teleprompter. That's when she's reading a script. But when she has to go off script and there are no teleprompters, she gets in a bit of trouble. In fact, she gets in a world of trouble. Check out what she said to Sonny Hostin on ABC's The View yesterday. If anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Not a thing that comes to mind. Not one thing. Then, of course, later in the day, she realized, uh-oh, I stepped in it again. Clean up on aisle 13. And then she tried to go on Colbert. I'm not Joe Biden. He, 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 he. I'm not Donald Trump. No, no, no. You were off prompter, lady. And you admitted it. There is no, you want four more years of this crap? You want four more years of this disaster? You go ahead and pull the lever for Kamala Harris. You go ahead and you convince yourself that she's going to be a change. You want to change, you got to vote for Donald Trump. Pam's in uh, North Carolina. Hey, Pam, welcome back to the Mike Gallagher Show. How you doing? Oh. Hi, Mike. Um, yes, my comment is I heard uh, a comment that Kamala Harris made on The View also, and I find it most disturbing. She said that she would do whatever it takes so Donald Trump does not get elected. I find it disturbing. 
Well, there's everything about her candidacy is disturbing. There's no question. There's no. This, this is a joke. It's one of the the most ridiculous campaigns for president any of us have ever witnessed. We keep talking about the first in our lifetime for a hurricane like Milton. This is the first time we've seen a, a candidate this wretched. She's awful. I mean, she's awful. Every. I mean, st- she goes to Stephen Colbert. That sicko fan, that guy, that guy is a loon. He's a far left nut job who's who's moderately funny, but he's turned his late night talk show into a complete political diatribe against all things conservative or Republican or Trump. He just hates Trump like like so many of them do. He because she do, so desperately needs male voters, she figures well, and believe me, this is all staged. This was all set up. This was all done in coordination with the Stephen Colbert. Colbert. A pretentious boob. It's Colbert. You're Colbert, buddy. Calling Colbert Colbert doesn't make you any more important than you think you are. <laughs> Colbert. So this is all done in coordination and all in advance. Let's let's crack open a beer. Remember when Pocahontas tried that? Remember the video when Pocahontas said, I think I'm going to have myself a beer. And her opening up a beer looked like me trying to change the a, a carburetor. She has no idea. She's She looks so awkward and goofy. And I think I'll have myself a beer. Here, honey. And her husband's off camera. It was, it was so bad, so cringy. Well... Kamala did the same thing last night with Stephen Colbert. When you, you, you first became the nominee and uh, and named Tim Walls as your your vice president uh, nominee, uh, people were calling it the vibe election. Everybody, all the vibes were all good, but elections I think are won on vibes because one of the old saws is I they just want somebody they can have a beer with. Uh-huh. So would would you like to have a beer with me so I can tell people what that's like? Okay, this was. Now, we asked ahead of time, because I can't just be giving a drink to the Vice President of the United States without asking. You asked for Miller High Life. You asked for Miller High Life. I'm just curious. Okay, the last time I had beer was at a baseball game with Doug. So. Okay, so cheers. Okay, there cheers. You there you go. <laughs> Ooh. That yep. tastes like the beautiful city of Milwaukee, the Wisconsin. The champagne of beers. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's a real good moment. There's some authenticity. There's a, there's some authenticity for you right there. That's very real. Last time I had a beer, I, I, I half expected her to say this morning. 800 655 Mike. I, I can't, I'm running out of ways to put into words how spectacularly awful Kamala Harris the presidential candidate really is. And if you're going to vote for her because you hate Trump, you understand what you're getting, right? You know what you're going you're gonna to inherit if she wins. Now, Frank Luntz, the pollster, who I don't think is a Trump guy. I don't know that he's, con- I don't even know what his politics are. I mean, a lot of people criticize him regularly. I've known him over the years. I've interviewed him. He posted Kamala's answer to the comedian Stephen Colbert last night. She's doing this, she's done this big media blitz. Kamala went on The View and admitted there's nothing different about her presidency if she gets elected than the the Biden administration. There will be no difference. She said she can't think of a single thing different in her potential administration from Biden's administration. I mean, that's a devastating clip. In fact, Christian, let's play that real quick, cut one. This is just beyond devastating. You know that everybody in her campaign, they're slapping themselves on the forehead saying, why would you say something like this out loud? If anything, would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? There is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Now, that, that's devastating. The whole premise of her campaign is there's going to be a change. What's the change? What are you talking about? If you can't think of one single thing that's different? I mean, it's now, you want to hear even more devastation for Kamala Harris? They think they're real clever putting her on Stephen Colbert. 
And he's a sycophant. He's a he's a hard left radical loon. Used to be kind of a funny guy on the was it the Daily Show? And he there for, from from wasn't he from with John Stewart with the Daily Show years ago? Now he's got his own big fancy show, the Ed Sullivan Theater, and he's sucking up to her. Let's have a beer, you know, all this crap. But he asks her a, a legitimate question. You're gonna be different from Joe Biden, right? And he asks her, what makes you different and what would be the same? It's a pretty straightforward answer, a question rather. Her answer, and I'm not kidding you, 65 seconds of intense, unhinged, word salad nonsense, she fails to provide a single proposal that would be either different from Joe Biden or, for that matter, even similar in her 65-second answer, as Frank Luntz points out on social media. Check out this unintelligible mess. Um, polling shows that a lot of people, especially independent voters, really want this to be a change election mm -hmm. and that they tend to break for you in terms of thinking about change mm -hmm. uh you you are a member of the president administration mm -hmm. uh, under a harris administration what would the major changes be and what would stay the same sure well i mean i'm obviously not joe biden um I know and that. so yes. that would be one change yes. in terms of yes. but also it, i think it's important to say with you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. And, and so when we think about the significance of what this next generation of leadership looks like, were I to be elected president, it is about, frankly, uh, um, I, 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 I love the American people and I, I believe in our country. I, I, I love that it is our character and nature to be an ambitious people. You know, we, we have aspirations, we have dreams, we are, we, we have incredible work ethic. And, and, and I just believe that we can create and, and build upon the success we've achieved in a way that we continue to grow opportunity and in that way grow the strength of our nation. I, so for example, my economic policies, I, I, I think- Wow, of it I named it wow, as, as Kamala Harris in all her glory.